Good afternoon, everyone. Um, today, I have the great honor of introducing Suzanne Beckstoffer, the current president of the Society of Naval Architects and Marine Engineers. Suzanne has spent 30 plus years at Newport News Shipbuilding after earning a Bachelor of Science degree in Civil Engineering at NC State and an MBA from the College of William & Mary. At Newport News, Suzanne led the migration of the Ford class aircraft carrier 3D product model to a new product lifestyle management tool set. She directed Newport News Shipbuilding Research and Development managed the installation of automated steel factory robotic cutting and welding lines, and performed engineering and design activities for aircraft carriers, submarines, and commercial vehicles. Since her retirement from Newport News Shipbuilding in 2016, Suzanne became the chairman of the Board of Bayport, Board of Bayport Credit Union, and is now SNAMI's first female president, truly making waves in the maritime industry. I have worked with Suzanne for several years in SNAMI and I can attest that Suzanne lives, eats, and breathes the maritime industry and is a huge advocate for students. It is my great pleasure to welcome my friend and mentor, Suzanne Beckstoffer. Well, James, thank you for that kind introduction. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to be here and um, I'm really interested in hearing what's going on at Michigan. And I would also like to say thank you to Professor Jing Sun and also to Ms. Leslie Krasniewski for um, it, the kind invitation and also for their patience in getting all the, uh, the arrangements set up for this. Um, you know, in these times we, we've had to change schedule, schedules once or twice and I'm glad that it's, um, it's finally happening. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about a couple of things and let me just say, I welcome questions. So if you have anything you wanna ask me, feel free um, and I got a, a ton of windows open here. So um, Leslie, if you see, or James, if you see um, something pop up in the chat, let me know and we can divert um, very quickly. So um, this is my update on what's going on with SNAMI to start with. And um, as James mentioned, um, I've been in this business for a long time. I, I started at Newport New Shipbuilding in 1982 um, I was a structural engineer, and I had a, a tremendously good plan. Um, I really wanted to build bridges, but I, I got a job at the shipyard, um, and the reason for that was because it was near the beach. So I had this um, excellent plan. I was going to work here for a couple of years, and then I was going to quit, and I was going to buy a good bicycle and go to Europe and ride around for a while, and when I ran out of money, I'd come back and get a real job. And so um, about 34 years later, I finally uh, retired from Newport News Shipbuilding, stayed there my whole career, which I guess is unusual. Um, but it's something I, I call the romance of shipbuilding. Um, there's something about shipbuilding that just kind of gets into your blood. And so I'm going to talk about SNAMI a little bit, and then I'm going to show you a couple of videos uh, from Newport News, give you an idea of some of the things that, um, that we work on there. And, um, and also, I guess I'd be interested in um, telling you a little bit about what the jobs are like in naval, naval architecture and marine engineering and particularly in shipbuilding. So let's start with SNAMI. Um, this is what SNAMI looked like in 1893 um, when it was organized. And this, I believe, is in the Waldorf Astoria Ballroom. And um, we still have that goal to advance the art, science, and practice of naval architecture, shipbuilding, and marine engineering. Um, but I will say we, we look a little bit different than, um, than we did back then. Um, just, uh, you know, you look around there and, and that's quite different. Um, I, one of my jobs when I became the president-elect was to, um, to put together a strategic plan for the organization and um, you know, things that you focus on, and I'm not going to dig into all of this. I mean, you can read it if you want to, but, you know, getting a 127-year-old a, a society functioning like a well-oiled machine, um, it, it involves working on the organization. It works, it involves uh, working on membership value, communications, you know, you can never have too many communications and relationships uh, within the marine community. So that's what we've been working on. And um, I will say again, James has been an important part of that uh, from both the student perspective and the young professional perspective. So thank you for all your, your work with that. And somebody got a hold of my slides and put these uh, crazy transitions in. So, you know, enjoy. Um, this is our headquarters staff. 
And um, my successor, you know, we, we will have an orderly transition here. My successor will be Andrew Kendrick. Um, he is uh, from VARD, the Vice President of Engineering from VARD in Canada. And then we have functional vice presidents in finance, planning, knowledge management, membership, um, education, and technology. And then we have regional vice presidents. We have sections. We have tons of committees. We have a young professional name I recognize, uh, again, uh, James. And we also have a student steering committee chaired by Amelia Dominic. And we have really wonderful professional staff. Uh, I can't say enough nice things about them. They are hardworking, they're dedicated, and they will go the extra mile for us. Um, our executive director is Val Hutton. Um, she has a whopping eight months of experience in the job now. Um, she was um, our interim for a few months and then we hired her full time in uh, first of February. And then Kathy Hartness, who's the uh, in the middle of the top row there, is, is our events and membership um, director. And those of you who are planning to attend SMC, um, Kathy is the one who's really put in the yeoman's effort making that happen. And when we decided to, to switch over to a virtual event, um, she went and used all her connections in the event business, um, attended lots of other people's events, learned what worked, what didn't work, and she's done a really terrific job along with the staff and volunteers um, on getting that lined up. Um, Michael Ashman in finance, Cindy Sloan, who's our membership director, and Sophia Iliagramanu, who uh, runs our Europe office. Uh, she's our office director in Europe and also works on recognition, which is, uh, is really important. And this is what volunteers look like. You see all these happy faces. We weren't able to meet um, in person this year. Uh, we did it virtually, but this is our SNAMI leadership um, symposium. And this is where we get the section chairs from all over the world and our other volunteer leaders together um, to make our plans for the year. And they are, I, I just can't say enough nice things about them. They're wonderful. A Little bit about SNAMI. Um, we're about 5,000 members and about half of them are professional members um, and another quarter are associates, and students are almost a quarter of our membership, which is unusual in a lot of professional societies. Um, it's you know sort of the professional folks, and SNAMI has gone out of our way to make sure that SNAMI, um, that students are a, a large portion of our membership and really a focus of what we do. So this is where our professional sections are located. Um, we are about 80% of our folks are in North America, um, but we have sections in lots of other places. And um, late last year, I had the pleasure of doing what I called the Snamey Iron Woman Tour. Um, I started out in Genoa at our Italian section and then went to, um, to Greece, to our Greek section in Athens, and then went to Turkey and visited three student sections in Turkey. Um, and we now have a turkey community, so we're, we're sort of en route to getting a, a turkey section um, started up. And then went to the United Arab Emirates, and we have a, a wonderful section there. And then our Western Europe section, which is headquartered in London. So um, we have people from all over the globe, which I think is, um, is pretty cool. And I've been attending section meetings um, since March virtually, and I, I hope some of you guys are doing that as well. And when I look at who's on the line, I see people from just about every time zone. And I think that's, that's wonderful. It's opened up a, um, it's forced us to open up a new way of looking at sections. These are our student sections. Uh, we have four, I can't remember the number, but anyway, 40 something student sections. And this is you guys right here, Michigan. So you're one of our larger ones. And um, we are pleased to have you. And I will say that you know, students are the, the growth point for SNAMI. So as you um, get into your naval architecture, marine engineering career, um, you start as a student and then you transition over into being a young professional full member. Now these are the faces of SNAMI. And um, we say faces, you know, it's more than naval architects and marine engineers. And so nearly half of the folks who are in SNAMI identify as being engineers of some sort, 
Um, I'm an engineer, but you know, I call myself a shipbuilder. I'm pretty proud of that. So I, I'm in that 12% of shipbuilders. Uh, we have a lot of educators, a lot of professors, um, big chunk of students, and I don't know why that's 13%, so that must be old data, because students are like 23% now. Um, we have a few recyclers, which is kind of interesting. We have ship operators, um, a number of whom are, are in that Greek section. It's kind of a, an interesting um, operation there in Piraeus. And also manufacturers who are, um, you know, important suppliers to this industry. And our members, again, worldwide, um, about 80% are in North America, and US and Canada. And this is kind of interesting, um, upcoming events. The Technical and Research Program, TNR, um, is doing a wonderful series of, of uh, webinars on different research topics. And there's one coming up next week, um, September 29th. There was one that I went to on wind farms um, out of Western Europe this past week. Also, um, a, a fascinating one, a fellow who had been in the yacht design business, Bruce Merrick. Um, it's, his life is like a Jimmy Buffett song. And he has spent his entire career designing yachts of various sizes and shapes and sailing them around all over the place. And just a fascinating uh, life story. Um, I asked him, hey, what's your favorite boat that you've ever worked on? And he kind of grinned and, and smiled and he says, the next one. So, you know, I, I guess boat people are like that. They really are looking forward to the next, the next ship. Um, and also we had a, a, a something from the military naval ship design. Um, some folks uh, who call this the, uh, the Goldilocks effect, too little, too much, just right. Um, and that was a really neat one coming out of our Washington office. So I would encourage you, um, as you have time, you know, this is the, the neat thing about virtual, is you can attend a meeting anywhere virtually. And of course, the big virtual event coming up here is SMC 2020 and uh, starts next week. I'm really looking forward to it. And um, James and I were both on a call just a few minutes ago. Um, it's, it's all set. And we've got fantastic keynotes, some really interesting panels, and 50 technical sessions, all of which are accredited for um, PE continuing education credits, which I think is just uh, pretty remarkable. And let me talk just a minute about TNR. Um, this is one of the jewels in Snaimi's crown. Um, we have technical and research work going on, led by volunteers um, and directed and participated in by volunteers in all kinds of areas, whether it's hydro or hull structure, which is my area, machinery, um, operations and safety, offshore, environmental, Ship design, marine forensics, small craft, uh, ship production, which is the Naval Shipbuilding Research Program, which is affiliated with the uh, US Navy, um, and also a number of ad hoc panels. And um, if there is a topic in here that is of interest to you, and I realize this is kind of an eye chart, um, but if you're interested in expanding your knowledge, um, getting some mentors, um, or just learning more on a topic related to naval architecture, marine engineering, or anything to do with ships, I would encourage you to, um, to reach out to the committee chair or panel chair and, and get involved in TNR. Um, you know, this is a great way to increase your own professional knowledge. Um, and I mean, I gotta say, I think it would look great on a resume if I were, if I were uh, looking at your resume. So take a, Take a look, and I see James is putting a PDF up. Thank you. Um, another thing that I think is important as you get into your professional career, recognition um, is just kind of the icing on the cake. And SNAMI has a number of really preeminent awards um, and medals that we um, present each year. Um, normally, they're presented at the banquet at the annual meeting at SMC. Um, this year, they're being announced, of course, and the medals will be presented next year um, at next year's banquet. 
but we we recognize um, scientific accomplishment in ship research, um, naval architecture, marine engineering, ocean engineering. Um, we also have a Bowles Medal, which is one of the newest ones, and that's for early career achievement by a young professional. Um, and I, I'm really excited about that one. But the folks who have um, who have earned that medal are really doing great things at a young age. And you can see that they're, they're already superstars and I'm excited about where they're gonna go in their careers. Um, Kennedy Award um, for planning applied to shipbuilding repair. You know, that's one that several folks from my company have, um, have received. And then student papers and the student design competition, the Lisnick Award. Um, those are just good ways of of recognizing excellence. And I think that's one of the things that I've always been so proud about with SNEAM is that we do recognize excellence. Um, and this is one of the things that we do. Um, for students, you know, the scholarships, um, scholarships are pretty important. And we offer um, a large number of both undergraduate and graduate scholarships. Um, if that's something that is of interest to you, um, check the SNAMI website. Um, you'll have the updated deadlines and information on the different scholarships that we offer. Um, but again, you know, we consider students a really important part of the SNAMI organization. And um, scholarships are part of the way that we um, encourage our students who are just getting started in the business. Okay, now this is, you know, sort of the, all the, uh, the goodness of SNAMI. Um, but I would, I would tell you these really are important. And there are a number of these that, that kind of resonate with me. Um, networking is one of them. Um, when I started out at Newport News and I was, you know, a dumb green little junior engineer, engineer one, and um, my boss, whose name was Curtis, informed me that I was going to join SNAMI and I was going to be the house committee chair for the Hampton Road section. And so I got voluntold and I just said, okay, I guess I will. And um, that was the beginning of my professional network. It was really kind of cool. I, um, I had to work the door, take people's money, um, had to know everybody's name because, you know, I had to, to make sure I knew who was, was coming to the meetings. And um, it was kind of neat because the executives in our organization were members and so um out of that you know crowd of four or five thousand engineers president of the company knew who i was and vice president of engineering knew who i was would, you know call me by name in the hall that was kind of um that was kind of cool and so i i credit curtis um with giving me that opportunity to understand what networking was about and what that meant in my career. And um, as you get into your career, I will say that networking becomes even more important. Um, I was talking to a friend the other day. He's, I, he's a fairly young professional. He's in his mid, late thirties. And he said, you know, my last three jobs, I got through SNAMI connections. And he's just started a new position. Um, great, great new opportunity. And he said, you know, I reached out to somebody I knew through SNAMI, we happened to bump into each other, and you know, here I am. Um, another friend of mine, four out of his five jobs in his career have come through SNAMI Connections. So it's not just um, getting, that, getting that first job when you're a senior getting ready to graduate. Um, does anybody here think that you're only gonna have one job through your entire career? Um, I'm, I'm guessing the answer would be no. And this is a, a terrific way to, um, to keep that network. And it's, it's all over the world too. That's the other thing. If you, if you want to, um, to get jobs in, in the US and Canada, North America, that's great. And, and they're wonderful opportunities. There's also plenty of opportunities in other places. And this is a good way to, um, to find those things. Um, and continuing education, that's the other one that really resonates with me. Um, when you graduate, your the half life of your engineering degree um, is you know a few years, and throughout your career, you're going to need to stay current, and this is a wonderful way to do it. Um, 
I, I love going to SMC. I, I really like the technical sessions and I can never, you know, I, I'm always stuck in meetings. And this year I'm so excited because I get to see all 50 of them. And if I can't go when it's live, then I, it's recorded and I'm going to be there and I'm going to, I'm going to watch all 50 of them. Um, leadership opportunities. That's another one. Um, I, I have been told that um, people's greatest fears are um, death and public speaking. So, um, you know, if you want an opportunity to be a leader in a low risk area, um, practice your public speaking, practice um, organizing, there's leadership opportunities and they abound in SNAMI. Um, and finally, publishing. Um, if, you, if you want to publish technical documents, if you want to be part of a textbook, um, if you're a professor and, and you're interested in writing a chapter for one of SNAMI's textbooks, or if you want to publish in one of our magazines or one of our journals um, or, or present at SMC, tons of opportunities. So those are the ones that hit home to me. There's plenty of others here that, you know, that might uh, tickle your fancy as well. And this is, you know, the, the longer version of that list. But you know, folks, there's there's tons of stuff here, and um, when I pay my SNAMI dues, actually, usually I pay mine and my husband's together. I think, boy, you're getting the best bargain in the planet. There's so much here, and it's some, um, you know, just it's exciting. Communications, um, the new website. We've been talking about this for a while, and. It's, you know, it's this close and I can't wait. It's, um, it's pretty fabulous. Uh, we've also moved all of our, uh, almost all, um, we're gradually moving all of our technical content and our papers and our, our journals to one Petro. So it's all searchable and available online. Um, if you're a member, you're getting our weekly blasts. Our social media has certainly ramped up. The journals, um, the textbooks, yeah, you, you're seeing more from SNAMI, and I think our folks at headquarters are doing a great job um, letting folks know what's available. And if there's something else that you want, you know, make the call, or you, know, you can email me as well. We're also um, building relationships with our corporate affiliates, and um, that's kind of that's kind of a neat thing to see when you have organizations, um, companies who hire um folks from michigan and other schools and whose business intersects with what snamey does um, we're building long-term relationships with them kind of neat to see and i'm not going to play these i got i got ship i have shipbuilding stuff so um but if for some reason if any of you guys are um speaking to high school middle school uh, younger students and you want to get a little video um, to give them an idea of what naval architects do or what marine engineers do or what ocean engineers do. Um, SNAMI's got them and you're welcome to, uh, to borrow those and, and to use those um, if you're talking to other kids. And I'm going to close my talk about SNAMI just by saying it's our society and that is another one of the neat things about SNAMI. Um, the members, the volunteers, we own it. Um, so it's ours. And giving back, um, getting involved, I, I volunteer my time and I get so much more out of it than, um, than anything I feel like I've ever given. It's, um, it's really a good organization. So if you have an interest, get involved and I think you're going to find it worthwhile. So I'm going to close that. Does anybody have any questions um, about SNAMI? I've got one, Suzanne. Sure. What do you think, uh, you know, as societies, professional societies have changed over the years, um, what do you think the future will be for professional societies as we go forward past this amazing change in the business climate of this pandemic? Um, how do you see the future of SNAMI and other professional societies? I see it as um, we have been forced to make changes because of the pandemic. And I think that we're gonna, we, we've already learned a lot, 
I think the idea of location is becoming somewhat less important because when we have a meeting, um, our meeting um, can be with people from just about anywhere. And when we discuss a topic, um, like I sat in on a, a TNR committee um, and their, their committee conference call what had people from seven different time zones. So I think it's becoming more global. And I think the idea of SNAMI as a North American based organization is expanding. And I, I, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, hi, I have a question. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there is another session also going on over here. So I speak a little, uh, quieter. So uh, I'm a mechanical engineering student. I'm, I'm my undergrad yeah. and I'm doing my grad school at the uh, Naval Architecture. So this is my first time uh, familiarizing myself with S name because I've never heard of it before. Uh, okay. Is it kind of like a career fair or is it different? Like, you know, career fair, like you get to know different companies and you get to like kind of interview with them at first. Yeah. Uh, is it S name just like that or it's a little different? That's one component. So at our convention, SMC, next mm -hmm. week, there is an actual career fair. And there are companies who will be represented there. And they will be meeting, um, I think, individually with students who want to interview with them. And so that is one component of it. Um, SNAMI also has a a site, a, a career section on our website. So companies that um, want to post job openings can also post job openings there. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the thing I mentioned, the networking. You know, oftentimes that's how you find jobs, quite frankly, is, is talking with people. Yes. Um, yeah, one, one of my, um, I call them my mentors, um, but young lady that I had been mentoring was so wise. She says, I like talking to people because that's how you get jobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's all that. And then there's also section meetings and uh, technical webinars and textbooks and all these other activities. But the, specifically, yeah, there's the, the career fair, there's career job postings, and there's that all-important networking. So the SNAMI that is happening between September 29th to October 2nd, is that mm -hmm. the career fair one or is that the yes. networking? Yes. Okay. Yes. That, it's, it's all that. It's the, that's the SNAMI Maritime Convention. Mm -hmm. And the student job fair is part of that. It's part of that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. My pleasure. Welcome to uh, welcome to the business. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, yeah. So you had mentioned some about getting involved in the TNR committees, and so I was wondering what kind of specific roles a student could play on them. Well, it depends what level you're um, what level you're at. Um, the some of them are related to new technology. Um, so there, there's some new ones in uh, related to underwater noise, um, digital twins, um, let me see, hydro structures, uh, ship design. So all kinds of different topics. And if there's one where you already have some expertise, you know, you can contribute. You can also join and, and learn. Um, and I would, I would encourage you if there's a topic that maybe you want that relates to a class that you're taking, you know, that might be another opportunity. Or if you want to, to go do some research working with that committee, you know, all kinds of opportunities. And okay. if, if there's an area that you think is interesting, um, if you go on the SNAMI site and look under technical, the contacts for all the TNR committees and then the individual panels are all on there. And if you have any trouble at all, just uh, send me a message. All right. Yeah, thank you. 
You're welcome. More questions? Don't see anything? Um, okay, so if there are any questions right now, um, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about the romance of shipbuilding. Um, because that's, as I mentioned earlier, that's what I ended up doing for over 30 years. And um, certainly wasn't my original plan. I had a, a wonderful plan, poorly executed. And um, so I, I went on to um, the Huntington Ingalls industry site and I pulled up some videos um, just to tell you or show you, it's better to show than tell, show you a little bit about what shipbuilding is like. And um, shipbuilding sort of had this reputation of being dirty and dangerous and, and kind of rough. And, um, I, you know, when I started working there, I, I don't think my mother had any, um, any inkling her daughter was going to go work in a shipyard. Um, I think she thought I was going to go work in a bank. And um, so it's been kind of interesting to, to really get deeply involved in this business. And I will say that shipbuilders, um, I think, are some of the proudest people of, of what they do. And um, let me just show you a couple of things, and I hope you'll enjoy them as much as I do. So this is what shipbuilding looks like. It's, yeah, there's steel banging, which um, what I do, that was virtual painting. Every time I see steel, of course, I get excited because that's what I did. Um, but it's very, very technically advanced. And um, there are unmanned um, vessels, there are manned vessels, they are on top of the water, they are under the water. Um, there's a lot of technology involved. And it's, um, it's really a, it's a really interesting business to be involved in. And, and I've been to shipyards in many parts of the world. And I will say shipbuilders everywhere have a lot in common. Um, I think shipbuilders traditionally love what they do. And um, it's, yeah, I hope you get an idea of, of the magnitude of, of what ship, shipbuilding can look like. And as you're exploring your careers, um, kind of give you an idea of, of what, <laughs> what that looks like. And there's, you know, this goes all the way back to the Phoenicians, um, that the tradition of uh, breaking a bottle of champagne or pouring water on the bow of a ship to wet it. Uh, we still do that. So there's thousands of years of history and um, it's really a great business to be involved in. So I hope you'll consider that. And um, as I said, I'm going to throw in some of Suzanne's free advice. Um, as, you're, as you're going through your student years, take the opportunity to um, get involved, get your summer inter internships in, go explore different places, um, find things that, um, explore things um, on a sort of a temporary basis. If you can work there for a summer or if you can be a co-op and find out you know, all the, the wide breadth of careers in naval architecture, marine engineering, other maritime fields, and find the one that's really the good fit for you. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to show you a little bit of precision now. This is the upper bow lift for CVN 79. There you go. John F. Kennedy, it's um, next aircraft carrier under construction. And any, if any of you guys are into Legos, this is like Legos except way better. And this is the um, thousand ton crane lifting the upper bow for the Kennedy and setting it into place.
So when I talk about the romance of shipbuilding, again, the first job that I had as a structural engineer working at Newport News was doing lift calculations for the big blue crane. Um, of course, they wouldn't have let me do anything this complex right out of school, but I did do some calculations for some of the smaller lifts. And when you put it together and everything fits within, you know, millimeter, um, that's kind of impressive. And I will also say that the next to the last day on the job um, at the company, there was one thing that I hadn't done. I, I felt like I had done everything I wanted to do in my shipbuilding career, but I had not been on top of that blue crane. So my next to last day of work, I rode up in this dinky, tiny, little claustrophobic elevator all the way to the top. And I walked out on top of that blue crane with a death grip on the railing and the wind blowing, and it was fabulous. So I wanted you to see that. Now, I, I will say most of my career was in aircraft carriers, but not all. So let me show you a little bit of sea trials from the Indiana. You get to see this pretty green James River water. And when you launch a submarine, you know, this is the silent service, and we send her out on sea trials. And um, just get an idea of what that's like. First time the ship goes out with the crew and shipyard employees and the Navy. Um, couple and the admirals along, and the I guess I will say it's one of the most nerve wracking, hardest things to do, um, knowing that you're going to be diving that ship under the water. And you'll see that I, I don't have the audio with this, but um, every shipbuilder who's involved knows how important it is um, their job in making sure that 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 submarine is safe, that it operates perfectly, um, that everything goes the way it's supposed to, and that at the end of the day, the uh, ship, the crew, the shipyard folks, the Navy, um, they're all gonna come back safe and sound from doing their job. And, when this is over, I I got a reminder um, this morning. I was reading the newspaper. I, I still read a local newspaper. And um, there was a reminder about a ship called the Thresher. And on April the 10th, 1963, um, the Thresher, which was a nuclear powered submarine, went down. Um, all 129 men aboard were lost during a test dive. And um, I'll just show you this. Every year on April the 10th, I would play for myself and my staff the, uh, the audio recording of the thresher crushing at depth. And that was a reminder every year that what we do is so important and that people's lives are relying on us doing a good job. So when, when I say that shipbuilders are proud, they are proud and they have a reason to be and they also have to be careful. And so as you're preparing for your careers as shipbuilders or whatever else you do, um, do know that the folks who sail in the ships that you help create are relying on you to do your job right. And I think I will close with one more, and this is my, my favorite. Um, when an aircraft carrier is, is being constructed, 
of course, one of the, the major jobs of an aircraft carrier is to launch and recover aircraft. And I think this may be my favorite, you know, just under two minutes ever. Um, this is a catapult launch um, test for the Ford. And um, I had the opportunity to take some students on board um, the Bush, which was the prior ship, to watch a catapult demonstration close up, but we didn't have any video. And so when the Ford was getting ready to, um, to get the catapult certified, they invited the ship's sponsor, Susan Ford Bales, who's the daughter of, of President Ford. Um, they invited her to participate, and she was one of the most, one of the most active, engaged participants in any ship ever, I think. And so um, this is how you test a catapult. You, you hook these big dead weights, dead loads to it, and you fling them off into the James River. So ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the splash. There she is, ship sponsor. They put a GoPro camera on that orange sled, which simulates, it simulates the weight of, um, of an aircraft and they have different sizes. And uh, put a GoPro camera on it and flung it out into the river. So you're gonna get a couple, yeah, you get a couple different views of this thing. Um, that water column is going something over 200 feet in the air, just to give you a sense of scale. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Were you ever present and, for that in person? The, I was not present for this one. Um, I was looking out the window and I saw some other ones. I, uh, I, I had an office at one point that, um, the windows looked out in uh, the direction of the shipyard and I could watch some really cool stuff going on. Now look at this. That's what is happening when you, <laughs> that explains why you got all those crazy views from the camera. But the, um, there you go, here's another one. <laughs> These, these sleds float and they, uh, they'll send a tug out to, to catch it and tow it back in. Um, I had, when I had taken a, a group of structural engineering students from NC State to, to watch one of the tests on the bush. And one of them in, I guess, true NC State structural engineer fashion says, how far can that thing throw a sofa? <laughs> And I just thought to myself, well, I think it would probably tear the upholstery off of it. And a sofa is not really aerodynamic, so I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, it's, um, that's part of the romance of shipbuilding, too. It's, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's important work. And um, I, I hope you enjoy seeing that as much as I did showing it to you. So that's my... Um, that's basically my prepared remarks. Um, are there any more questions? Anybody um, want to ask anything else? What were some of the other most memorable moments from your career at Newport News? Oh, wow. Um, I remember one in particular, um, we had gone to the christening, I think. It was, yeah, it was the christening of the Bush. And President Bush, um, we had friends and family with us, and President Bush rode by in his, his limo, and um, two of my nieces were with us. They were kind of small at the time. And he stopped and rolled the window down and waved to them. So, you know, I have to say that was personally, I think, one of the most memorable things. And they were you know, they were little kids and they were really impressed with it. Um, and then I guess going on top of the big blue crane, that was a, that was pretty, pretty magnificent. And then um, one of the jobs that I had 
a number of years ago was installing a bunch of um, robotic cutting and welding equipment. And um, that was very satisfying. I will say that was, very, it was, took about two years. It was tens of millions of dollars and um, it worked. I, I think that was probably, you know, that was something new to us, all the automation that went with that. And um, using robots, using um, lasers, um, automation that, of a level that we had not seen before. And by golly, it worked and they, they still use it. And um, I mean, they've had to refit in the last few years, but you know, getting 20 years out of, um, out of a production line, that's pretty cool. Any other questions? Well, um, I will conclude with a thank you. And thank you for having me. Thank you for the invitation. I hope to see a lot of you at SMC next week. And um, my contact information is on there. If you want to you know, set up a, a conversation, feel free. And um, I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Susan, actually, when I uh, just uh, I tried to ask a question, then I realized that my mic uh, was muted. Okay. <laughs> Sorry that about happens. that. I was going to ask you, you know, as a first, uh, I mean, the uh, SNAMI history as a first woman president, hmm. uh, you, you, you certainly said it's, there's a role model for, for a lot of us. Uh, so I was wondering if you have anything, uh, you know, any special advice or uh, hmm. wisdom to to tell <laughs> the, the students and especially those, uh, uh, you know, uh, the girls and uh, how you come uh, this long and uh, uh, what's uh, uh, What's the future? Well, yeah, I think sometimes my free advice is, well, don't do what I did for heaven's sake. Um, but in this case, my things really worked out in, in this case. Um, if you love what you're doing, if in this case, shipbuilding was a surprise and um, don't be afraid to say yes. I guess start with a yes. And I think back to the opportunities that popped up that really were not part of my plan. Just, you know, I, I have these wonderful plans in my head and then I'll get a surprise and think about it. And if it looks interesting, well, just say yes. Um, I think about um, the time I, I was asked to go to the waterfront to manage that steel factory. I'd never been on the waterfront. I'd worked in an office with computers, but I thought, okay, um, if not me, then who? So I, I did it and um, it, it was great. And I learned a lot. And another thing is to get good mentors, get work with people are, usually really flattered to be asked for their advice in a career. And um, I had several really good mentors and a number of them I met through SNAMI. And um, I, a couple of them are still around. And those people who have um, some seasoning, um, they've seen a few things, they know a few things, you know, talk to them, um, ask, ask their Ask for their thoughts. They're not, they may not know the exact situation you're in, but they, um, finding people who have the wisdom of some experience is really important. And um, I, I would say that starting with a yes and getting, asking people for their mentorship, their wisdom, probably the two most important things um, in, and also enjoy it. You know, this is, 
I think people who are in the business of ships and boats love the water, love the sea. And um, you're going to find that, that spark of joy in, um, in those people as well. Thank you for asking. That was a, that was a good question. Um, let me t hey, let me tell you a story. You might have heard this, but the reason I became an engineer is because of my 10th grade math teacher. Her name was Ms. Baldwin, the meanest old woman who ever lived. And I will say that um, those mentors can include teachers because teachers are, um, they're, they're on your team and um, students talk to your teachers about their experiences and, and take advantage of their knowledge and their wisdom too. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Anything else? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure. <laughs>